Good afternoon, everybody. It's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I hope you're having a great week. We are going to be painting a fun little neon pineapple today. Um, it's supposed to look like neon lights, so this is a little different than what I normally do. Um, but we're going to start by painting the entire thing black. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a great day. If you have not painted a door hanger before, you're in for a treat. This is a really easy one, I feel like. It's not going to take a lot of detail or things like that. And so I feel like this is one just about anybody should be able to do. Um, tell me hello where you're watching from. Say hi as you come in. We're live on TikTok also. <laughs> I am ready for the 4th of July. I've got my patriotic shirt, my patriotic glasses, my earrings, all the things. I am ready. <laughs> I feel like the glasses are a little much with the earrings, but that's okay. I couldn't find my red sparkly ones. And if you're not going to wear them on 4th of July, when can you wear them? Good morning, Je uh, Jenny from Ohio. I'm located in Kentucky. Now, it might be freaking you guys out a little bit that I am painting over all the lines on this pineapple, but rest assured, I can still see the lines under my black paint. They're very faint, but I can see them. So if you end up buying one of the wooden blanks from our shop, it will come with the design laser etched on it. Um, and you can paint over those lines and you'll be able to see them through the paint afterwards so that you can go ahead and, you know, still be able to paint the design. That goes for words or anything like that. So I painted right over our little pineapple's face here and I can still see the, the neon etching lines. So we're just going to go ahead and paint the whole thing black. See, it feels weird painting a pineapple black, but that's what we got to do to get the really cool neon effect. Good morning, Cynthia. Watching from Florida. Ooh, nice. It is really nice here today in Kentucky. It was funny because I went to kickboxing class this morning, and it was hot inside the gym. And when we stepped outside, I've been accustomed to stepping outside and it feeling like you get hit with a wall of heat and humidity. And today I stepped out, and I was like, who left the air on? It feels good out here. And we were like, man, we should have put the, they have like a big garage door at the kickboxing gym. We should have put the door up. Um for class. It felt better outside than it did inside. We is going to get a picture or two here for the blog for when we make a blog post about this project. If you haven't checked out our blog, you definitely should. It's over at Southern Adornment, Southern Adornments Decor.com forward slash blog. We have all kinds of different blog posts um, from things about like how to get paint out of your clothing to how to paint a patriotic door hanger or different door hanger inspiration. Like we have a collection of, I think there's a collection of patriotic door hangers on there. Um, the other day we did one of a, um, <laughs> of a patriotic butterfly in a blog post. You love my nails? Yeah, even my nails are patriotic. Check it out. They're red aspen nails. If you want to know more about them, there is a red aspen link in my TikTok profile. And I can put my red aspen link down here. By the way, um, I do a drawing every month from everybody who has um, bought nails through that link. And um, the drawing is coming up June the 30th. I'll do the drawing. Actually, probably July the 1st, I'll do the drawing. That way, everybody who orders in the month of June will be injured in the drawing. And one person will get a free set of red aspen. I actually put these on last night while I was at my son's baseball game. So that's how easy they are to put on. I sat and watched baseball in my little camp chair and did my nails. <laughs> Gina, um, don't let all the accessories fool you. I'm sweaty underneath all of this from going to kickboxing, and I forgot to put on makeup this morning. So I slapped on some lipstick. We got cute earrings, glasses, and a bandana to distract you from everything else that's going on under here. <laughs> yes, my glasses are a pair I wear. They've got the cute little patriotic toppers. How fast do they ship the nails? Usually within a day or two. I usually get mine within a week of ordering them. Hey, Lisa, you're on your way to Tennessee. That's not far from me. Cindy, watching from Southwest Florida. My parents have a home in Estero, Florida. I love going down there. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. Good morning, Laura. Did I miss a question? I thought I saw like a long comment go by and I didn't get it quick enough. It might have just been a comment. 
I will go back and read your comment later, I promise. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got to get this black completely dry because the next step is to put white in all the areas that our neon lights are going to show up. So, because we're painting with neon, neon is a very, like, translucent color. Um, any neon paints are, usually don't cover very well. And so, you have to paint white underneath them before you can paint with the neon. Let me go ahead and pull out my neon paints. We need a neon pink, a neon green. We need neon blue. Do I have any? I think I have a neon blue. Maybe this is, no. This thing's making me hot. Bright blue, true blue. Oh, here it is. It, the blue doesn't look as neon when it's next to all the others. It was kind of deceiving. I couldn't find it. And then I need a yellow. <clears throat> hey, Pat. Uh, will we be getting anything from you on the registration for the workshop? What are you talking about? <laughs> we don't have a workshop going on currently. Uh, we will have a workshop in August. So if you're asking about that, yes, we will be sending out emails um, letting you guys know when it's time for the workshop that we're doing in August. Thank you, Lisa. Hey, Pam. Good morning. Do you have, you have to paint it black, then white. Okay, so the background of this design is black. So it was either paint around all the neon spots or paint the whole thing black. And it's just easier for me to paint the whole thing black. Uh, Dana, somebody gave it to me. I, I think it was just an old, an old headband. And actually they gave it to Charlie. And I was like, I'm wearing that today. <laughs> but it's just fat. It's like stretchy, like t-shirt jersey fabric. So it actually is not sliding back on my head. So the next step is going to be to paint white in all the areas that our neon is going to show up. So I'm going to get a filbert tip brush here. Let me see. I need to pick one that's wide enough that it's gonna be able to cover. That's not filbert tip. I like filbert tip because the edges of these neons where they start and stop are kind of curved. And so the filbert tip kind of helps you to go up next to the curved edge and kind of have like a nice smooth stroke. I guess we'll just use this one because I can't find another one that's slightly bigger. Okay, we're gonna start with our white paint and we're just gonna, I'm gonna start up here at the top and we're just gonna start making lines where all the neons go. And it depends on how thick you put on your paint, but you may have to do two coats of this in order to cover your black. I'm trying to put it on pretty thick, but I still may need a second coat to get it thick enough because you want it nice and um, bright white so that when you paint your neon on top of it, you have good coverage. Do you know when we'll get the virtual kits? The virtual kits we're hoping should ship out by the end of the week. Um, we're planning on working on those this afternoon, as well as the big box of blanks. Those will ship out by Friday as well. Let's see, there's a little V shape right up here. Anytime you're painting with one of these round tip brushes and you're trying to get like a nice, crisp, like soft, soft edge right here where your paint starts and stops, you need to push down with your brush till you get to the end of the line, then lift straight up. All right, can you adjust the camera out a little so we can see the full project? Does that help if I pull it back like this? The, the pineapple is so long, it's hard to fit the whole thing on the table and where you guys can see. without the etching. Um, so some of our designs don't have etching on them, but most of them do. So it depends on what you're looking for. If you're wanting just a shape of a pineapple with no etching, there is one of those in the shop. So notice I am dipping my paintbrush frequently just to make sure I've got like good coverage. When you started out, how did you find time to paint? When I started out, how did I find time to paint? Oh, goodness. 
Um, I used to paint at night when my husband would sit down to play video games. He's, he's a big Xbox person. He likes to play Xbox. Um, also, my husband was in the military, and so he was deployed a lot of the time. And so it was kind of my outlet. It was just something that I did to kind of de-stress because I was at home with two little boys. At the time, they were like the ages of seven and three, and they were quite a handful. And so it was just a, a way for me to de-stress. I would paint until late at night sometimes, like nearly midnight or later. Um, now, I only really paint during the day. My kids are getting a little older, and I'm able to relax a little bit and not <laughs> not have to stay up quite so late. Plus, this has become my full-time job. So, when it becomes a job, then you're able to kind of do it during the daytime or make your own hours doing it. When I was doing it before, I was um, just a stay-at-home mom. I didn't have like a, a full-time job. But I have always found time for crafting. It's, it's been my therapeutic outlet. All right, Diane meant she was talking about the Dallas event in a few weeks. She should have gotten some emails so far. Yeah, you should have gotten some emails. If you have bought a ticket to the live event in Dallas, you should have gotten emails about it. If you did not, you can contact our customer service at info at southernadornmentsdecor.com, and they can resend you the email and make sure you've got the information you need. Yep, and we're going to be sending more emails. Can you still see the etching after it's painted, or does it fill the, do the et, does the etching fill up with paint? The etching kind of fills up with paint, and, and it makes it to where it's kind of disguised. I mean, if you looked really, really closely, you could probably still see it. But, you know, if you've filled in the lines well, then you probably wouldn't even notice. What brushes do you use? Right now, I'm using um, a set that I got from the DecoArt website. Um, this is a size 8 filbert tip brush, so it's rounded on the tip, and that's what allows me to create, like, this nice little rounded edge at the end of these strokes. They'd like to see the end of your paintbrush in camera. Oh, it's kind of hard to show you because it's covered in paint, but... <laughs> It's kind of like a flat tip brush, but the edge of it is um, a little bit more curved. It's rounded. It doesn't have a nice, like, right angle on the edge of the bristles. Um, we do have sets of these in our shop if you want to grab some at shopdoorhangers.com. We have packs of filbert tip brushes, in, and they're in 12 different sizes. So that kind of makes it nice when you, you know, don't have the size you need. No, I probably won't ever do tiered tray clubs. I love tiered tray stuff, but that's just, it's not in my, my wheelhouse. I enjoy kind of messing with it for my own personal stuff, but, you know, there's plenty of other people who do that sort of thing, so I don't think I will end up venturing into that. I'm kind of making a mess with this white paint, y'all. I've got it on the, <laughs> I keep dripping it. There's like where I go back and forth to my, my paint palette. I keep dripping it and splattering it. So I may have to do a little bit of touch up work when I'm done with my black paint. Do you cut nature blanks in your own shop now? Um, so some of the blanks we are cut, cutting in our shop now, but we've still got some setup we need to do out there um, with pertaining to like the exhaust on the machines and things like that. So we aren't fully operational out there just yet. Um, the paint that I use is DecoArt Americana brand. You can pick it up at most craft stores. Oh, thank you, Heidi. I appreciate that. If you're interested in getting started with door hanger painting, there is a free ebook in my um, TikTok profile you can go and grab. It's the Beginner's, I Beginner's Guide to Painting Door Hangers. Okay, here's what we've got so far. And my white lines don't look as good up close as they do far away. So if yours look like this, it's okay. You're on the right track. <laughs> from far, from back here, they look crisp and white and perfect, don't they? <laughs> All right. Um, let me look at my picture. I'm like, how do the lines? I think I need to switch to a smaller brush for the lines on my glasses, my pineapple glasses. So I'm going to switch to like a little round tip brush here. Denise wants to know if you can really see the lines through the black paint. Yes, I can. Let me show you up close. So my sunglasses, do you see the lines? 
You can see the lines. Oh, you can kind of see them. They're easier for me to see probably than for you, but they're there. If I couldn't see them, you, you would think that I was probably really good at um, freehanding stuff, huh? So I'm just taking my little round tip brush and tracing right inside those lines. I switched to the round trip, round trip. <laughs> I switched to the round tip brush because these lines are skinnier than the ones um, on the rest of the pineapple. I think you like seeing your splatter. Do you like seeing the splatter? Can you see it? See all the little white drips and splatters? That's where I'm going back and forth from my paint palette to my project but we can easily touch that up when we're done. Got something else in the paint there too. Some kind of debris. Okay, back to tracing my sunglasses. It helps if you rotate your project if you've got shaky hands, so don't feel bad if you have to do that. Will you have to apply a second coat of white? Um, I think I probably will just to be safe to make sure that my neons look really nice and bright. But we'll go back and do that. And the second coat is always faster than the first coat. Nice little spot. Right there. That's where I keep getting it on my hand and transferring it to the design. <laughs> I'm really bad about getting my hand in the wet paint because I'm constantly rotating this thing and I'm too impatient to wait for anything to dry. But like I said, with us using black paint, we can easily clean that up. Black covers everything. Notice how I'm not stopping in the middle of the project to touch that up because I'm probably gonna make another mistake. There's no point in touching that up right now. And sometimes when you get to painting, you end up covering it up and you might not have even needed to touch it up. Lisa wants to know paint parties. My friend Heidi Easley is the queen of paint parties. So if you need to learn how to do paint parties, she is your gal. Um, I can give you tips and things based on like what I did in the past, because that's definitely how I got started, but I'm no longer like teaching um, business type things. But Heidi Easley from Texas Art and Soul, she is uh, has a membership called the Paint Party Headquarters. I can say I do have a couple of um, blog posts on the topic. So if you've never done a party before, I would just start there. Start at southernadornmentsdecor.com um, on the blog. And there's a little search bar. Use the search bar and look for um, paint parties. Just type in paint parties and it'll come up with a couple of blog posts that'll help you get started. Um, I'm like, how can I do this without getting wet paint all over my hand and all over the project? <laughs> they probably should have. Um, but anyway, I would just recommend starting with a small group of friends, um, family, church friends, people that you feel really comfortable around, um, and just start there. And just know that you don't have to be like the best painter in order to teach a paint party. People at the paint parties, they just want to show up and have somebody bring all the supplies that kind of has a basic knowledge of what paint colors to use and things like that. So if you feel like you kind of have a, a decent grasp on those sort of things, you don't have to be like the Bob Ross in order to teach these. TikTok wants to know what was your job before you did this full time? Oh, before I was doing all this, I was a teacher, an elementary school teacher. I taught just for one year and then I ended up substitute teaching for several years Look, look at y'all. I got my hand. <laughs> Let me just show you the hot mess that this has turned into that we got to touch up. <laughs> Luckily, it's going to be easy to touch up. Um, are you taking a picture of my mess? Yeah, I want to see your hands. Put your hands. Put my hands down there. My mess. I want to see the back side of it. <laughs> She's taking pictures. <laughs> but I taught for one year and then I substitute taught. Um, I have always done crafts and things like that at home and on the side as a way to de-stress, but also to bring in extra money for my family. And um, I started doing paint parties back when my husband was deployed to Afghanistan. He was in the, um, in the National Guard at the time. 
and it became a really great way to bring in extra money. And so when he came home from the National Guard, um, instead of getting a part-time job or something, I decided to just amp up doing the paint parties, and it took off. <laughs> it's been amazing. <laughs> Cindy says it looks good. Well, thank you, Cindy, for the encouragement. Yeah, let's do some happy mail. Drop a comment and um, let's see. What should our question be? What's your favorite kind of fireworks? Oh, what's your favorite kind of fireworks? <laughs> do you like them loud? Do you like them big, bright, colorful? Um, or do you like them small, like in sparkler size? <laughs> My husband is a firework junkie. He uh, went and bought a whole bunch of them. And we're putting on a fireworks display at our house at the end of July. Okay, now I'm doing a quick second coat of white. And then after that, I will touch everything up before I start my neons. White's kind of tricky because when you go to do your second coat, you're going to feel like it doesn't look super smooth, and that's okay. That's normal. White just, it, it struggles. It's hard to get it to look perfect and smooth. It's just a little chalkier than the other paints. And so you may struggle with that. Just try to do long strokes if you can, and that'll minimize it. Jennifer likes them big, colorful, and the kind that makes you go, wow. Me too. Bigger and louder is better to me. <laughs> Julie Tribble Morgan is our happy mail winner. Congratulations, Miss Julie. Send us an email with your address and we'll send you some happy mail. Her husband is a go big or go home. <laughs> My husband's definitely go big or go home. He feels like he needs to put on a show. Okay, so let me show you a comparison here. Here, see how imperfect it is? I told you guys white is hard to get nice and smooth. So if yours looks okay like this, it's okay. So it's going to look like that. But look at this, the difference in the coats. So down at the bottom, I have not done a second coat yet. Up at the top, I have. So you can see that down here, you can still kind of see some of the black popping through. But up here, it's a whole lot less. I switched back to the filbert tip size brush too for this because you want to use the same width brush if you can to do your second coat. Long strokes. Long strokes are your friend. You're going to have less brush strokes if you can do longer ones. Try not to get my hand in the paint again. Struggle is real. I try to show you guys how imperfect mine are because I know you guys are sitting there when you do your paintings, you're sitting there picking yourself yours apart and you're like, well, mine doesn't look like Tamara's and Mine's not as, my paint's not as smooth as Tamara's, and you're just sitting and overthinking every bit of it, and then you feel like yours isn't good enough, and you know what? The truth is, you're watching me on video. Mine are far, you're, you're like looking at mine from six feet away as opposed to six inches away like I am, so don't sit and pick yourself, pick yours apart. Give yourself a little bit of grace. Guarantee you, mine probably look like that up close too. Yes, I have. It's been a while. I don't use neon paints that often, but I do enjoy them. Uh, these are the Americana neons. One of them is the multi-surface neon. I don't know why I have that one in multi-surface, but I do. Damon has a comment. What did Damon say? Are you here to harass me, Damon? He said, good thing imperfect is okay from when I painted that one time. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, Parker, wasn't he the one that painted the, the reindeer antlers pink because he didn't have white or something like that? I don't know. It was a mess. It was funny. Painting should be fun. I think Damon likes UV printing better than he likes painting. <laughs> He's got one of those fancy UV printers. So he, he will paint or design something on Procreate and then just print it. A whole lot faster. Not nearly as therapeutic though. This is almost like reminds me of like painting on a chalkboard or something with the black and the white. Just a reminder for this part, switch back to your round tip brush because this is, these are skinnier lines. Ooh, I've got a really good happy mail question for the next one. I just thought of it. Damon said a printer will still make you need Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so you need therapy after using that printer. Is that what it is? The printer isn't always perfect, right? The cost of wood will make you need Jesus too. He was talking to me about that last night. We were texting back and forth and he's like, oh my goodness, how much is your wood? <laughs> we were talking about how much our wood costs are. Okay, since we've got our white all done, now we can go back and touch up all the little places where the paint splattered or Tamara got her hand in the paint and made a mess of it. So I'm just getting a flat tip brush. The reason I chose the flat tip is because when you're using just a little bit of paint, you can kind of like do like a little sweepy motion and you're not going to have like a glob of paint. You don't need a glob. We're just doing a light touch up. Black covers really well. So just get an itty bitty bit on your brush and just do like a little light fan sort of sweepy motion to touch up all of those little imperfections. Don't glob the paint on. And this will go fairly quick because the black covers so well. Normally I don't worry about doing a whole lot of touch up work to something, but with this being so, like the colors are so crisp, but with the black and white, it was very obvious that I had a mess on my hands. So just, it made me feel better to fix it. Accidentally got a little too much paint on my brush there. So I was dabbing some of it off. <laughs> if you got messy with your paint lines, you can go clean them back up. All right, let's see your happy mail question. Okay, let's do the next happy mail question. My happy mail question was, what song is a feel-good song that makes you want to get up and just move? Because I'm making a playlist for the Southern Adornment Live event in Dallas. And I've only got about 35 songs on there. So I need like, what is the song that makes you get up out of your seat and you just start, like, it's just a feel good song. Tell me what your feel good song is. Okay, look how much better that looks. Although I just noticed there's a spot over here where the wood is kind of needing some sanding. We're gonna disguise that by painting that black also. I can sand it later. Group. Oh, Party in the USA. That's a good one. I like that one. YMCA. Yes. Happy. Yes. I'm going to go down through this and just add a lot of these to my playlist after this is over. <laughs> April said anything with bagpipes. I was not expecting no, that I answer, April. That <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, I got a feeling. That's a good one too, Melissa. Mmm. The Wobble song. You know what I was listening to after my workout on the way home today? It was Bob Seger. Uh, oh, what's the name of it? He goes, just take those old records off the shelf. I listen to them by myself. <laughs> Today's music ain't got the same soul. I like that old time rock and roll. Yeah, I was jamming to that. And then, I, and then it was Pat Benatar, Hit Me With Your Best Shot, and Rick Springfield, and I don't know. I had, a, I had a whole playlist going, and I had my windows down and my sunroof back, and I was feeling it. 
<laughs> okay, happy mail winner is Kim Blaylock. Congratulations, Miss Kim. I put a um, Sonic Diet Strawberry Limeade in here, and I keep getting strawberries hanging my straw. <laughs> you love some Bob Seger? Me too. Ooh, can't stop the feeling. Greta, that is Charlie's jam. She loves that song because it's the Trolls anthem, you know. She loves it. Okay, I think we're pretty dry here, but just to be safe, I see a couple spots up here that are still wet because we're fixing to start our neons. I've got my neon colors picked out. We got thermal green. It's really bright. This is a little brighter than the color that I used in the example, so we may have to mix a little bit to dark to like bring it down a little. So I may mix a little bit of thermal green and festive green because I need it to look more pineapple-y green. And festive green is not really a neon color, but it is really translucent like neon. So I'm mixing those two greens together and that's looking way better. Yes. Okay, there's our green. And let's see, this entire top part is painted green, so I'm just gonna make a mess, obviously. Rotate this around. <laughs> Footloose, that's a good one too. Y'all just keep giving me all the good songs. Can you show it up close so we can see where you touched up? Oh, you wanna see the touch-ups? Like, there's a couple of touch-up spots. You see that, how the paint looks different? I'm not worried about that either because when I do a clear coat on it, all that will be disguised. Party rock anthem. That's good. Hey, welcome. Okay. Um, again, we're going to use the same size brush. So I've just got it. We're like using the same two brushes almost this entire project. So I'm switching back to this filbert tip and I've rinsed all that white out of it. I said this was a filbert tip, but you know what? I think this may be a, a flat tip brush. Now that I've like rinsed it out and I flattened the brushes out, it's looking a lot more flat. So if you don't have a filbert, <laughs> flat will work apparently. All right, we're gonna use that green that we mixed up and we're just gonna paint right over the white. Ooh, we're gonna have a hard time getting that to cover. Let me add some more of this festive green. See if I can get it to cover very well or cover better. The neons can be fun, but they can be frustrating because sometimes they just don't cover very well. So I've mixed some of that festive green with it. Let's see if we can get it to do better. What I might should have done is instead of painting white, I might should have done like a, a green undercoat on this. Yeah, okay. Let me show you what's going on here. Do you see that? I'm gonna have to do like six coats of green to get that to cover the white and look smooth. So what I'm gonna do is stop doing that and I'm gonna dry it and I'm gonna do a green undercoat first so that even though it looks streaky, the green undercoat will show through the streakiness and it, I won't have to do like six coats. You like the nails, Kathy? I dropped the link for the red aspen nails in the in the comments earlier. What does the bottom of your shirt say? Flags, fireworks, freedom, and Independence Day. Okay, let's try this color. This is Irish Moss. I think this might be a good undercoat color because it's like really solid. It's not transparent. I dried that so I can just paint right on top of it. I'm going to test, do a little test spot here and see if this covers better. Which actually, this color may just be the color we need to use instead. It looks really good. We're testing. Testing, testing, one, two, three. That does cover a lot better. I don't know if I like that as much as I like the, the Irish 
What do you like better? Do you like this or do you like this on this? No comment. No comment? You don't like any of it, do you? <laughs> no, I'm, it's not my show. <laughs> uh, okay, this color right here is almost a neon anyway, so I'm considering going ahead and just using it instead of doing the trouble of doing two shades of green because my neon green is quite frustrating me. Watching from Texas. I'm coming to Texas next month. I'll be in Dallas. I'm dripping water on the door hanger. Okay, let's just do this. In order to get this to look right though, I gotta paint this white so that it goes back to the same color underneath. Gotta neutralize that green so that when I paint over it with the color that I'm gonna use, I have the same effect. <coughs> Hopefully y'all are learning something today. That's the goal. You love the way it looks now, which is the black and white. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Kind of like chalkboard color or like a pineapple skeleton with glasses. <laughs> Dancing Queen, that's a good song too. Okay. Now, we're just going to say, forget these colors. We're putting them back. We're not going to use those. We're going to use this one, Irish Moss. It's not really a classic neon color, but it's giving me the color I want. I'm wanting like this bright, bold green, and I was not getting that with the neons. So, we're just going to say forget it and use, use this one. If you want a lime green that covers really well, this color is it. It's covering over that white really nicely. Let me show you. A lot better. You can still see lots of brush strokes underneath from all the coats of white that we did, but that's okay. Nobody's going to pay attention to those when they walk up to your door and see this hanging there. They're just gonna see the over the, oh, the whole thing overall. They're not gonna fo focus on all the little imperfections that we focus on. Katie uses a trace of Holtzby paint and she washes them. She wants to know if you think egg trays are better. Well, um, if you want something you can throw away, the egg carton is it. If you don't mind the washing it out or if you like take a while to paint. Maybe you, you, maybe you paint like an hour here and an hour there and you need to like be able to like leave the paints and come back to them later. The ice cube trays are great to have because they usually have like a little lid and so you can pop that lid on there and it will keep your paint um, from drying out in between painting sessions. So it really just depends. I usually just paint all in one sitting. I don't like start now and come back later and finish later. So since I do it all in one sitting and I just want something I can throw away and not have to wash out, the egg cartons are why I choose that. Could you do a light sanding to get rid of all the brush strokes or would that ruin it? I feel like that's going to cause you more heartache, heartache than it than anything. Like. It's just gonna be a lot of extra work because if you do the sanding, then you gotta do a whole lot more repainting and you're still probably gonna have brush strokes. You know what? If we didn't want brush strokes, we would use the UV printer like Damon is doing. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want something hand painted, you're gonna have brush strokes. It's not meant to look perfect. So you just gotta take off your perfectionist pants and enjoy the process and enjoy the finished product. So what size is that? What size is this door hanger? It's about 20 inches. I think it's closer to 19 and a half, but I cut it on my thunder laser. How do you know how much to charge for your painting? Um, so what you charge is up to you. I mean, people charge all different prices. If you go on Etsy, you're gonna find stuff from $80 per door hanger all the way down to like $20 per door hanger. And it really just depends on um, how long you've been doing this, what you would be happy to receive for a door hanger, how long it takes you to paint a door hanger, how detailed it is. It, it's all so subjective because you are the artist 
And so if you haven't been doing this very long, I would just start out by charging whatever you would be happy to get. So if that's $25, charge $25 starting out. If that's $35, charge $35. Okay. See, we got lots of brush strokes going on, but it's all right. Um, don't feel like you have to match the prices of the other people that are selling. You do whatever makes you happy. Now, I started out at like, I think it was, most of them were 30 or $35 when I started out. There might have been one or two that were 25 that like I, you know, was able to paint like really, really fast. They didn't take very long. And then after I'd been doing this for a year or so, my quality had gotten better. Um, my details had gotten better. And I was getting more orders. So when the demand starts to increase, then you're able to increase your prices a little bit. And so it had gotten to where I was staying so busy with orders that to kind of like be able to handle the demand, I increased my prices to like 35 to 45 or 40 to 50, depending on what it was. So if you get to that point where you just can't keep up with the order, the orders, maybe it's time to increase your prices. Um, we sell the wooden cutouts and you guys paint them. And yes, we do have lemons. How much for a paint party? I started out at $25 per person for a paint party. And then after a couple of years, um, I increased to $35. Now I kind of feel like because the cost of wood has gone up, the cost of everything's gone up, gas, wood, all the things. You probably need to start out higher than 25. At least 30, if not 35, needs to be your starting point. Um, and you've got to keep in mind, I started back in 2015. That was seven years ago. Due to inflation, like if I were to start my business today, I probably would not start at $25 per person. Because a lot of times with the paint party business, you are traveling to the person that's having the party. And because of that, like your, your cost is going to be higher. Your gas and everything that you're going to have to pay for, plus the cost of your wood and all that, is just higher than it was. Okay, this blue is making me mad too. It's not covering very good. I'm, I'm beginning to decide I'm not happy with the neon paints, especially not over white. Do any of you guys use neon paints? Is there a brand you like better or a kind of neon paint you like better? This is the only brand I think I've worked with when it comes to neons. Which may be all neon paints like this. Kind of the nature of the beast. Okay, let me show you. This blue is looking real splotchy. It's making me mad. That's the problem you've had with neons? Me too. I've got a color that's pretty similar. This true blue, or maybe it's not true blue, it's bright blue, is pretty similar to a neon without being a neon, so I may just use that to do the second coat. It's not quite as bright. See, this is the, this is the bright blue and this is the neon. It's not quite as bright. Puff paint neon. Woo, that would be cute too. I don't think I have any of that. What about patio paint at the Hobby Lobby? Yes, but do they have patio paint neon colors? I don't know that they do. Um, I don't know, Christy. I, I've never seen a medium that makes your paint cover better, but I don't know. Ooh, this is doing a lot better. This bright blue. It's not as vibrant, but... Maybe I could do the neon on top of this. Do gray lines help the neon stand out? Um, I don't know. I would need to do an experiment with that. So gray is a good undercoating color when you're painting with red. I haven't tested it with neon. I don't work with neon paint enough to know, so definitely would need to do a little bit of experimentation.
This blue is covering a lot better though. It's not nearly as bright, but it ain't making me mad either. <laughs> Hey Sheila, PC sister. Heidi, I'm from Western Kentucky. If you want to watch this video later on replay, the whole thing will be on YouTube. All of my tutorials are on YouTube. Okay, I'm going back and adding the neon blue on top of this bright blue just to see if it, it does kind of make it look pop just a little bit more. So maybe that's the trick with the neons. You gotta pick a color that's kind of like a base coat that's maybe not white. And then you gotta do your neon as your top coat. Okay, looks better. It's not perfect, but that's not what we're going for. Add some gesso. Is it gesso or gesso? I argue with myself every time I see that word. How far am I from West Virginia? Quite a bit because we're on the other end of Kentucky. Why do people do hashtag replay? That's usually Cynthia if they're watching on the replay. It's just like to let you know I'm here. Okay, so instead of starting with the neon pink, let's start with a neon like pink paint, or this is not like an official neon paint, but just a bright pink, and see if we can, well, do I wanna use this one? I wanted to go for more of like a magenta. This is like a bright, bright pink. Mm, yes, let's do this one. This is Vivid Violet. I'm gonna do this as my undercoat base coat and then we'll do the actual neon paint as the top coat on the pink. This is a pretty color. Vivid Violet. Earrings getting all twisted up. Neon yellow patio paint. They do have it. Oh, well, thank you. I did not know. I feel like the white coat underneath is still necessary just to get these colors to be vibrant enough on top of black, but it might not have been as necessary to do two coats of white since we're doing this undercoat of of all the colors first. Tracy says she's discovered the patio paint neon colors cover very well. Oh, I'll have to go get me some of those. What are, do they carry them at the Hobby Lobby? That's where her bank was. Oh, okay, good. I'll have to try those. By the way, I forgot to mention this earlier, but if you um, do not, if you're not able to attend with us in person in Dallas next uh, next month, July fifteenth and sixteenth, we do have a virtual ticket option. It's not too late to grab a virtual ticket and there are um, a handful of the virtual supply kits still available. Um, all of the event will be live streamed into a private Facebook group for the virtual attendees. And you'll be able to watch those videos um, either live or on the replay, it's your choice or both. And you can paint along with us. And uh, the, the information for the supply kits is inside a private Facebook group also. So you'll be able to like either buy the kit, uh, buy the kit or buy the supplies yourself. It's up to you. <laughs> I am very festive today. Hey, Mary Catherine. What club is this t-shirt from? This is an oldie from like probably 2019, 2018. 
It's from Framed by Sarah from years ago. I had it folded up and put in the closet because I, I, I take like my seasonal shirts and I fold them and put them away so they're not in my like everyday t-shirt drawer. And it was in there. I'd forgotten I even had it. I thought this was going to be a fast to paint door hanger. I was wrong. <laughs> With all the layers you have to do, it takes a little longer than you think. I'm doing a second coat of that vivid violet because the first coat looked like you could still see so much white peeping through it. Let's do the last happy mail. Okay, one more happy mail, guys. Um, let's see. I gotta think of a fun question. I don't know why this popped in my head, but what is the best zoo you've ever been to? You know how some zoos are really good and some of them are not so good? What's the best zoo you've ever been to? I guess I was thinking about this because I think there's a zoo down in Dallas and I was wondering if it was a good one. So answer my question about the zoos. Which zoo is the best zoo? The St. Louis Zoo is a really good zoo. I've been to that one. It's actually free to get in. I think you have to pay to park. And if you want to like ride the train or do any of that kind of extra stuff, I think that costs money. But other than that, you can like walk through and look at all the animals and it's free. The Nashville, Tennessee Zoo is just okay. I feel like it's not as good as some of the others that I've been to. Dallas is good. Cincinnati's good. Dallas is good. The Florida Zoo. Which, what's, the, where, that, where in Florida is that one? Tyler, Texas is a great zoo. I've never been to the Dallas Zoo. I've never been to Dallas. I've been to like the airport in Dallas, but that's about it. So there's a zoo in Fort Worth too? How many zoos are there in Fort in, in that area? I've been to the Tennessee Safari Park. That's fun. That's not really a zoo, but it's fun. Yeah. You you like drive through and feed the animals. Brookfield Zoo in Illinois. Somebody <laughs> said don't go to the Dallas Zoo. Fort Worth is good. I've never been to the D.C. Zoo either. I've been to D.C. like three times. Okay, now that we've got the vivid violet down, I'm going to use my neon pink and see what this looks like on top of it. It's called sizzling pink. And it's sizzling, y'all. It's really bright. Let's see what this looks like. This may be a disaster. I feel about this one. I kind of like it, but I'm not sure. It does really look neon though. Like it looks like it's glowing on my, <coughs> my door hanger here. I think we're just going to go with it. Let me show you how bright this pink is. Whew. Really does glow. I've never been to the one in North Carolina in Asheville. I've driven past Asheville lots of times. I've never really stopped and stayed. I've always thought it would be fun to visit the Biltmore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We usually don't go past the Smokies. What'd you say? Oh, sorry. Last happy mail winner is Judith Welch Price. Congratulations, Judith. <laughs> they have a drive through zone. That's kind of like what the Tennessee Safari Park is. You drive your car through and feed the animals. I have some really funny videos of Uncle Corey acting all big and brave until the buffalo approached the vehicle. And then he was like, ah, get back. Roll the window up. <laughs> he kind of freaked out and just threw his bucket of feet at it. Okay, 
Glad to be done with that pink. I feel like I've been painting pink for a long time. Dallas Aquarium. I love a good aquarium. Okay, yellow. Let's do yellow. I'm kind of nervous to just jump and do this yellow, so I'm thinking I might even... I don't even know if I have enough of this. This patio paint yellow. It's running really low. Let's take the lid off, see what we can get out. A little bit more. Definitely need to go get some more of that. And then I might do a coat of neon on top of the patio paint. So this is the patio paint sunshine yellow. I know it's going to cover good so because I've used it lots of times. Next to this black, it kind of looks neon. Pam's just says this reminds her of those old black light posters. Oh, yes. Pat wants to know if Uncle Corey's going to Dallas. No, Uncle Corey couldn't get off work to go to Dallas. He won't be there. I will say I'm taking back what I said at the beginning of this, that this would be a good one for a beginner. Because with all of the coats that you have to do with the neons and stuff, I think it would be very frustrating for a beginner. Unless you stay away from the neon paints and just use bright colored paints. It may look easy, but... Sometimes the easy ones will deceive you, or the easy looking ones will deceive you. I've definitely had to let go of perfectionism. I'm not a perfectionist anyway, but I've had to let go of any ounce of perfectionism I might have had for this door hanger. Painting on black is always a little tricky anyway. Ava wants to know what's the stuff you use to keep paint moist when blending? Um, that is, what is that called? Blending medium. Blending medium, something like that. I don't even know if I have any of it up here. When does the big box of blank ship? We're hoping to ship them by Friday. <laughs> I make them all look easy. Oh, sometimes they are not. <laughs> she said that I tried. It's a hot mess. <laughs> it is a pretty yellow, and it, it, it covers really well. It's extra, like... At Hobby Lobby, I think this one, the base price, says $2.29. But it's worth it when you're trying to paint with yellow. So worth it. All right, I don't think I'm going to paint the neon paint on top of that. I like the way this looks already. I think I'm just going to go ahead and take my little paint pens and finish this up by adding, like, little, like, white lines that make it look like these are glowing. Whoops, that's not dry. We can start doing that up here at the top though. So take your white paint pen and just kind of add some highlight lines on the areas that you want to look like they're glowing. You could even do like a couple little dots. These little things will kind of distract from your paint, your paint uh, brush marks and things like that too if you're frustrated with it. This is what I mean. See those little lines? And I'm using a 3M size Posca pen. These are linked in my Amazon favorites. I'm gonna do this all over to the different areas. You could also use like puff paint for this if you wanted like a, a dimensional sort of look. Just adding it all over that neon to kind of make it look like the neon is shining. Just go for it. Don't worry too much about 
putting them on in all the right spots. Just go with what feels right. Okay, I think once I give this a nice, like, bright coat of a clear coat, it'll really shine and look great. Another thing you could do is add, like, a glitter top coat to it. Is 3M the thinnest possible Um... I don't know. It's the thinnest one that I have. I have 3, 5, and 7M. That's the only ones that I really use. Mary, a friend at church gave this to Charlie. I have no idea where it came from. I'm sure you could find them on Amazon. Okay, I can't help myself. We're going to add a little glitter to this. What kind of clear coat? What kind of clear coat? Um, I'm probably going to spray it with triple thick glitter, or not triple, not glitter, triple thick gloss spray, but I'm going to put a coat of this starlight varnish on it first. It's got really fine, fine, fine glitter in it that's kind of got a holographic look. You must be having a weak moment. <laughs> She's teasing me because I don't like using glitter. I don't mind it too much if it's coated or if it's like stuck in the glue. So this is the starlight varnish. I just squeezed it right on here. And the trick is to get it spread out evenly. So if you have too much in one spot, just kind of, you know, sweep it and move it to another spot. I'm trying to do this in slow motion so she can get a picture. If you have an area that looks like real white and milky like that, kind of brush over it and then just spread it. I got a little too much up here. And sometimes the more you brush it, the more milky it'll look, which it will dry clear. So it's not that really a big deal, but it's just a little thicker. And this is fine. No, there's stuff. Oh, on the edges. Some more down here. Your fancy technique there, squirt. Oh, yeah, fancy technique. <coughs> I like to do a clear coat on top of this, too. I don't know why. I just I like the look of the triple thick spray, even though this has varnish built into it. So I will probably take it outside and still do a coat of clear, th triple thick on it after this. Okay, let me dry it so you guys can see the glittery effect. Again, this is what I'm using. Starlight Varnish from DecoArt Americana Paints. It's got a really fine glittery like holographic glitter in it. I see a spot that I missed, hold up. Once it was starting to dry, I could see a patch that was kind of dry. It didn't have any glitter on it. Sammy says, I can't get my triple thick, thick to dry clear. Are you using the spray? Because there's also a triple thick brush on and I do not recommend using this on a door hanger as a top coat. Uh, Katie, this is what I'm using. It's the Starlight Varnish. Deco Art Americana. You want to get the big sunglasses blank and do a talk to me goose door hanger. Yes, do it. Send me a picture. We have a sunglasses door hanger on there. I don't know if it has the, if they all have the stars and stripes etched on them or not, though. I can't remember. That would be awesome. rust -Oleum lacquer. Yes, I used that for years, Susie. It still works great. Okay, this is not completely dry, but mostly. Enough that you can see the glitter. Look how pretty. Starlight varnish. Does everybody see it? On TikTok, like she's using glitter blast. Glitter blast. Is that a spray? I have struggled with glitter sprays. She says it's a spray. They all get clogged up. What is the secret to not getting them clogged up? I feel like 
I use it one time and then I throw the can away because it gets all gunked up and I can't spray it anymore. Uh, it's not a regular blow dryer. It is a craft or a heated craft tool. These are linked on my Amazon favorites. It's a heat gun, technically. Okay, it's all done. What do you think? You like the glitter? I think the glitter really adds a little something, something. But do you notice how, like, now that we've added this clear coat on top of it, the black looks so much better. You can't see the little spots that I touched up. Um, you, the The uneven paint strokes are way less noticeable. So you got to have a little faith. Trust the process. Get to the end. You love it? Okay, good. Thank you. Yes, glasses are a pair I wear. I have them linked in my TikTok profile. I'll put the link down here for you guys as well. Um, there is a 15% off coupon code, and they can do your, your prescription. You just have to send it in to them. There we go. There's pair I wear. And then a lot of you guys were asking about the red aspen nails. I'll put that link down in here too. Here's the, the nails that I've got on today. These are all sold out. You can't get these anymore, unfortunately. Look at all the paint on my hand. This is ridiculous. <laughs> but they're easy to put on. I have lots of videos on my YouTube showing how to put them on. So you can go back and watch those. All right. Is there anything else y'all need to know about? Go grab a virtual ticket to um, the Dallas event if you would like at southernadornmentslive.com. You can watch the replay for this entire tutorial over on my YouTube channel. I'm going to be putting that on there later today. Also, if you want to text the word LIST to my phone number, 270-207-9091, it's up in the video description. Um, you can get the colors that I used today because, you know, we changed our minds like five times. So I will put the official, like, final choice color list on there, um, and we'll send that out shortly. All right. Y'all have a great afternoon. See you next time.